All right, this is the final segment here on the breaking story of the American Medical Association calling for a ban on direct-to-consumer advertising of prescription drugs and medical devices. My name's Mike Adams, the health ranger, a longtime critic of the criminal pharmaceutical industry and its long history of using children for medical experiments, giving kickbacks and bribes to doctors, engaging in price-fixing monopolies, and uh, what else? Killing people with their chemicals, too. All kinds of things. Predatory market practices, that, that describes this industry. So now the AMA wants to ban advertising, which is a, a good idea, uh, a great idea. But the, the AMA is trying to save its industry from a collapse. It's trying to save the relevancy of doctors. And I'm here to tell you in this segment that they're too late. And you know why? Because doctors are going to be replaced by robots in just a few years because there's absolutely nothing that a drug pushing general practitioner doctor does that a robot won't be able to do in a few years. What do I mean by that? Well, most doctors are glorified drug dealers, right? Patients come in, they saw an ad on TV, they saw a brand name drug, and they got convinced and brainwashed because they're not too bright. After all, <laughs> who the hell watches TV anymore, right? But so they, they see the, these ads on TV or in magazines or whatever, and they walk into the doctor's office and they demand this drug. And the doctor uh, it doesn't even care anymore that that patient doesn't even have the condition that that drug has been approved to treat you know like this might be a blood pressure drug the patient doesn't even have high blood pressure the doctor's like well whatever i'm just going to write this prescription anyway make this patient happy because he or she thinks that she wants this drug because there were some exciting looking people on television saying they took the drug you know, total fraud, of course, total marketing fraud. I don't know why the FTC isn't arresting these drug company executives for marketing fraud, but uh, it's a complete fraud. Anyway, the doctor is just a pill pusher, a drug dealer. Uh, there's nothing in that equation that can't be done by a robot. So in the future, which we'll just call idiocracy, right, to refer to the movie, where they have a great scene in the hospital. I love this scene. You got to watch that movie again. Uh, the characters go into the hospital, they've got wounds and injuries, and there's this brain-dead zombie behind the counter. It looks like a fast food counter, and it's got kind of a cash register, a point of purchase type of thing. This is the intake section of the hospital, and this drooling zombie idiot behind the counter is the perfect depiction of what we see today on college campuses. These protesting students, they look just like that. They're like total, complete idiots. They have no clue what they're doing. They, they, they're just zombied out. And on this, this point of purchase machine, this intake machine in front of this person, are icons. Not even words, because words are too complicated for the, the idiocy that takes over in the near future. So they just, they're just symbols, like symbols of a head being stabbed by a knife. And, you know, if your patient has a knife sticking out of his head, you're supposed to touch that key and they have other other symbols other keys different kinds of injuries different kinds of problems from constipation to uh, an eye gouged out or whatever well in the future it, and i'm talking about now the real future not not the idiocracy future which might be partially real <laughs> might might already be here in some ways but in in the real future the doctors are just increasingly irrelevant. You know, a patient could come in and they can have, you know, Dr. Robot do this whole interaction. Hello, welcome to Dr. Robot's clinic. What seems to be bothering you today? And the patient's like, I saw this awesome ad on television for, for a drug called uh, Poopify. I want some Poopify. Okay, please insert mm, credit card. Or whatever you know it'd be like a like a robotic drug vending machine like a pharmacy and a hospital all rolled into one it's basically it's basically just over-the-counter drug pushing under the guise of like an ai doctor who asked you a couple of questions you know hmm, have you been sleeping well lately oh no man i've got any sleep at all you need poopify turbo whatever i don't know i'm sorry that's that's not that funny. Um, 
I don't plan these in advance, so I don't have scripts, okay? Give me a break. This is all improv. It's all unscripted, so cut me some slack if it's not funny. I'm Not all, not all the attempts work. Uh, nevertheless, robot doctors, this is, this is serious. I'm serious about this. They will have like vending machines with a, with a little AI face on it, you know, a little animated face. And actually, it won't talk like a robot. It'll, it'll, be, it'll probably look like Dan Rather, you know. And I can't do Dan Rather's voice, but it'll probably be like, this is Dr. Dan Rather. <laughs> yeah. uh, insert your forearm barcode and RFID tracking device uh, in the slot below. Okay, that's definitely not Dan Rather's voice. But nevertheless, you get my point. And, and so at, when that happens, doctors become irrelevant, or at least the, the GPs do, the general practitioners. Obviously, they still need, you know, surgeons, at least for a while. Brain surgery is too difficult for robots at the moment, but given another generation or two, and probably robots will be doing that too. Can you imagine having a robot do brain surgery on you? I mean, it might, it might be better than having a human doctor do it because some of those human doctors are hooked on, you know, painkiller meds that they uh, lift from patients. <laughs> Here, we're going to give you 60 pill, uh, 45 pills for your pain. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're pocketing 15. You know, they're doing the surgery, one hand's shaking, the other hand's wiping their nose. <laughs> yeah, I need some more energy, you know. It, it, they're, they're out of control, some of these guys. I'm not, I'm not saying all surgeons are like that. There are some great surgeons out there, and I'm glad they exist. And we need them. We need them. We need them for trauma. You know, we need there, – there, there are legitimate, you know, uses for, for surgeons. And I'm glad they exist, especially the, the first aid, trauma, you know, battlefield medics, those kind of surgeons that work there to help – soldiers uh you know stop blood loss and and heal and so on i really admire what they do so i'm not i'm not trashing all surgeons i'm just saying that right now you know surgery is done by humans down the road it might be done by robots and that to me that would be kind of freaky i'm not sure you know do you want to be like the beta test run on this what if you're in the middle of a surgery and the robot decides it has to update its software you know how <laughs> you're like you try to you know run your browser or whatever and all of a sudden it decides or Skype Skype is the worst on this. You launch Skype every time you launch Skype. It's like, "Oh, I got to update." Uh wait around while we're improving your Skype experience, you know, downloading version 175.275.857 ABC whatever. Can you imagine you're in surgery like they're working on your heart? <laughs> it's like your heart's beating and they're going to do like bypass surgery with four robots hovering over you like terminators with uh with surgeons masks you know <laughs> and all of a sudden one of them's like update <laughs> you know everyone pause and you're like wait a minute your heart's still like and the update's like not not working because the hospital's bandwidth is all jacked up because some some male nurse down the hall downloading porn is taking all the bandwidth. So this, this robot <laughs> is like all stalled out. Uh, update failed. Update failed. You're like, poo-doo, poo-doo, poo-doo. the anesthesia is starting to wear off. You're starting to wake up. What's going on here, man? <laughs> it's like the other three robots all turn into terminators. They downloaded the wrong update because it got hacked by anonymous. Now they've turned into terminated robots. They start. No, better yet. They turn into like, China's organ harvesting robots. That's it. So they, instead of healing your heart, boo-doo, boo-doo, they cut it out. Boo-doo, they, they, they suck your heart out, throw it in a cooler, and they run out of the hospital with your heart and sell it to China. That, see, that's the future that I think is probably more likely <laughs> to happen if they turn surgery over to robots. And I know I got a little off track here uh, on, on this topic, but I think that's more likely. I personally... If, if I ever have to undergo surgery, I'd rather have a competent, sane, uh, substance-free human being doing it. I don't want some freaking robot run by software programmed by a bunch of geeks. Not that there's anything wrong with geeks, but I mean, they're not that serious about software quality, let me tell you. Uh, anyway, okay, but my point is, my point, and again, I'm sorry for getting off topic, my point is that doctors that just push pills will become irrelevant. And that's what the AMA is trying to go after here. 
So what's going to happen? Will the AMA succeed in banning direct-to-consumer drug advertising? I have no idea. I imagine they won't succeed. I imagine that there's too much greed in the pharmaceutical industry. They will pressure everybody in Congress that they need to pressure. They've already done it. And they'll just say, no, we're not going not gonna to do that. Or they'll pressure the FDA, whatever. And they'll keep advertising drugs until they basically bankrupt the entire nation. They, they will not let go. They are parasites. They are parasites on society. And they, they are driven by greed and a complete lack of ethics, a complete lack of humanity, a complete lack of anything resembling medical morality, if there even is such a thing in the, in the medical system anymore. So I don't think that the AMA is going to succeed. I will be surprised if it happens. Then again, I'll be surprised if, uh, if there's a robot performing surgery on me one day. I'll be really surprised. If I wake up and see like four Terminators hovering over me, <laughs> you can bet. Uh, you can bet I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to fight back against those Terminators. Okay, Terminator, uh, Terminator Hospital Robots, <laughs> come with me if you want to live. <laughs> yeah, right. Open your heart. Can you imagine that? Yeah, freaky. What if they, uh, what if they, you know, cut your chest open, and and whatever you have inside doesn't match their pattern? Like, what if your heart is on the other side of your chest? <laughs> Which, by the way, it, it happened. Some people are born that way. Some people have like a mirror image of the rest of us, and their heart is on the right, kind of. I mean, it's mostly in the center, I know, but but everything's reversed. Like the valves are reversed, and everything. Heart surgeons will tell you this. This happens. They've seen this. What what if the robots do that? What do they do? Like, you know, just blue screen of death shut down. Don't tell me they're running on Windows, please. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if Bill Gates creates the software that's doing surgery on your heart? He's like Mr. Depopulation. Of course that surgery is going to fail. Oops. We lost another one. (laughs) Looks like we need another update on that robot. (laughs) All right. Enough. Enough joking around.